Hey folks, welcome here. So today we are going to be building a jig that's uh, mimicking a blueback herring like you see here. Or uh, I think some people also call them blueback shads. Um, so what we have on the back is uh, what, I, what I would call purple. Uh, and then a stripe of yellow underneath that. And then basically uh, silver for the rest of the belly. Uh, and then the fins look to be a bit olive. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to give this a go. So stick around and let's get the tying. Okay, so we're going to start with a 3 8 ounce silver ball head jig in the vise and has a bit of an extended a longer, a longer shank hook on it. And we're going to be rolling with some yellow uh, 140 ultra thread. Um, not because you need to roll with 140 or with yellow for this jig, but that's just kind of the most appropriate thread I had in what I in what I have for thread around here. Uh, typically, I would probably tie this on 210, but uh, we'll go with 140 and hopefully it won't uh, break on me too many times. So we got our base going here and we'll just bring that all the way down and bring that back up. And then we'll start by tying in our what will be our tail. So I'm going to tie, I'm going to have some olive saddle hackle and some gray saddle hackle for the tail and the olive will I want the olive to extend a little bit further than than what the gray will and we'll bring that actually maybe I'll snip this off just a bit more and uh, we'll tie that in some people get rid of all the the fluff here at the base of the feather or all the marabou or down whatever you want to call it uh, I don't really care. It can it can stay in there. It's not going to affect anything what I'm doing. So, yeah. And we'll tie that back up. Okay, we'll just add our second feather now. I'll give that a bit of a snip too. cinch that down. Next what we're going to do is we're going to tie in our gray saddle hackle that will also be part of the, the tail here. All right so we have our gray feather here and you can see the olive the olive comes out just a bit past past the gray and we'll tie that in. that tied in and we'll do the same thing on the other side here okay so we have our tail tied in and now I'm going to take two more pieces of olive saddle hackle and I'm going to tie them in backwards and these will then act as our fins and so I want them yeah I want them yeah right along the back so they'll show up sort of on the what will be the bot or pardon me the bottom of the fish of the jig when we're done and just making sure that these get tied in relatively straight here and we'll do the next one and I've got the curves uh, the feathers are curved a bit so I've got the curves for those facing out and uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I've never, I feel like I haven't tied in a while because life has been busy. And uh, I certainly haven't tied this jig before. So this is, you're seeing this in, uh, in real time here, how my first attempt at this jig. So I haven't practiced this or anything. So, <laughs> so bear with me. And we'll just, Come back up with that. All right, so we got that tied in, and that'll just sit there like that until we're ready, uh, until we make it up to that point with, with the rest of the body. And so now we're gonna start building the rest of the body. So we're going to use some gray bucktail, a little bit of white bucktail, 
and then a little bit of yellow bucktail, and then some purple uh, coyote tail. Okay, so we're going to start building what will be the belly of the jig, and we're going to start with some white bucktail, and I'm just going to trim this up a bit here. Yeah, that should be about right. And I'm going to bring that just to the base of this olive saddle hackle here. Um, and I'll tie that in, squish that down a bit. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to kind of layer this a bit. I'm going to add now a little bit of uh, gray and then I'll add some more white after that. But I don't, I don't want necessarily too much gray on the bottom here, but just, just to kind of give it a bit of, a bit of color. So next I'll get some gray bucktail in there. All right, we got our gray here. I'll just measure that up a bit. I'll just give that a bit of a trim. And we'll see, yeah, that should be good. Pull that away. And then we're just gonna press this down. It doesn't have to go all the way around, just kinda, but just a little bit at least. And that's looking, looking like it'll be okay. And then we're gonna add just a bit more white and then, you know, rinse and repeat type of thing. And next what we're gonna do on the, on the belly here is we're gonna add a bit of flash. So I'll just find a few pieces of flash here. We got two right here. So I'm just gonna put them sort of, it'll be on the belly, but off to the side a bit. And I want them to come uh, just to the, the same length as the bucktail, essentially. And we'll fold those over. And we'll take a couple more pieces here. And we'll line those up. Couple of looser wraps, fold these two ends over, and tie them in. Okay, that's looking all right so far. Next, what we want to do is we're going to build we're gonna build in some yellow now along the sides here. All right, so we got our yellow here, and this is just gonna be enough to give it a bit of a, a yellow lateral line here. And I might, in hindsight, now I might add a bit more to this belly again too, but we'll see. Um, and even this is looking like it's too much. Yeah, they're half of that. That should be good. Yeah, perfect, okay. So we'll tie that in. And that's just going right on the side. Yeah. And then we'll do the other side here. Good. And I'm going to add, I'm just going to add another little strip of white along there because I feel that's looking a bit sparse, but maybe that's okay. There we go. That's a bit better. And now, unfortunately, because I don't have a rotary vise, I'm just gonna have to take this and flip it upside down. 
Okay, so I'm next I'm going to tie in the purple coyote tail. So I have my piece of coyote tail. I'm going to try and get as long as hairs as I can out of this. Give that a snip. Kind of try and get some of those stragglers out of there. And we'll try and split the hook here as best we can. And we'll give that a little tie down. I'll probably add a few, a little more here yet, of course. for sure add some more I'm just gonna add a bit more on this side here give this little ball a snip here because actually the coyote tail um, can bulk up here bulk up a bit here on the ball when you when you tie it in and so sometimes it's good just to snip that excess off and maybe a bit more on the other side there as well Just want to make sure I'm not covering up that yellow too much, or if at all. I'm going to snip this off as well here. There we go. All right, so that should be good for that, and I'll flip this back over now so that our jig is in in the right way, as they say. And then we'll just build it, build it back up to here a bit more until we're ready to take those wings back or those fins back. And so I'll just continue the same thing here again. Just kind of do the white gray and then the yellow on the sides. And then I'll flip it over again and just add the, the coyote tail on the top there until we're until we're at the base of those of those uh that olive saddle hackle now i don't know if this is starting to look like much of a, a blueback herring or, or not or whatever but i will tell you that i made a jig similar to this last year with with the purple and the gray and the and the yellow um and it was easily easily my number one jig for catching stripers last year and uh and this year i'm also going to i'm going to try this jig on on some early spring lake trout uh, our season here in nova scotia opens up april 1st and so so i'm going to give there's not too many lakes in nova scotia that have lake trout and so i'm going to give this a go um in one of those lakes and uh and see what we can come up with hopefully hopefully we'll get some all right, we're gonna we're gonna give this a go. We're gonna see if this is if these are ready to roll here. So I'm just gonna bend these back like that, and then I'm gonna take the thread on this side, and I'm just gonna tie them down from here. And we want to see here if that's that's not the right spot. So 
and you want them to kind of stick up like that. So, all right, so that's sort of what we want. Um, we're just going to have to see when we tie in. That it should work. All right, it's going to work. I have faith. And so we're just going to do the same thing now. We're going to do white, gray, white, little bit of gray, and then some added flash, and uh, yellow on the sides, purple on the belly, uh, on the on the back. And so here's the delicate part of sort of tying around, tying around those feathers a bit, making sure that they still sort of come come through. Okay, so now I just have to uh, finish up the collar here, which might take me a little bit. There's just a lot of a lot of loose ends poking up, so we'll get those tied down or snipped off or whatever. All right, so we got the collar tied on there. Now all we got to do is whip finish it, and then maybe we'll give her a little bit of a test in my makeshift my makeshift tank that I have. And we'll see what it looks like in the water. All right, that should be good. Give that a snip. Put a little UV resin on that. Give it a quick little blast with the light here. All right, let's throw it in the tank and see what it looks like. Lots of kick in the tail. The bucktail and the coyote have a lot of flow as well. The it keeps its body really, really nice. And those olive under, those little fins underneath there are also doing their job. Kicking back and forth like that. And so this is going to be an absolutely amazing jig, I think. For stripers and for lake trout. Um, and I'm sure anything else that can get this thing in its mouth will hammer it as well. All right, folks. So that's that's what it looks like. Really full jig, and I really think this is going to be a great jig for stripers and lake trout. Um, so give it a shot and try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. Take care.